Two surveys reported from the Washington Times and Federalist revealed that more than 50% of millennials identify as socialists, ranging from a slight preference to a more radical breed. A prime example is this clip from the 2019 Democratic Socialists of America Convention, or DSA. If we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Uh, quick point of privilege, quick point of personal privilege. Um, yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, of pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. A bit silly, but the trending direction of millennial and Generation Z's ideology is no laughing matter. The spread of hyper-intersectionality and democratic socialism is having several adverse effects on politics, academia, and most importantly, the fabric of American civility. Here's how to change their minds. DSA is the largest and fastest growing socialist organization in America. Founded in 1982, the group is most notably remembered for the Occupy Wall Street protests of 2011, a populist revolt against the government bailing out banking institutions that nearly failed due to corrupt policies. But the organization's rise in popularity didn't stop there. Membership has grown from 5,000 in the late 1980s to more than 60,000 paying members today. 90% of whom joined after the 2016 general election and the inauguration of then president elect Donald Trump. For the first time ever anywhere, the 40 I am so sorry <laughs> to my world. I am so sorry to my world. This is not what we want. The mission of DSA can be summarized in three parts. Decrease the influence of money in politics, empower ordinary people in workplaces and the economy, and restructure gender and cultural relationships to be more equitable. Several prominent politicians like Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, two self-identified democratic socialists, are championing a revolutionary path to achieve these goals via reforms like student loan forgiveness, universal health care, and gender equality legislation. Senior Research Fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research, Max Golker, has written extensively on the subject. Specifically, Golker takes a refreshing step back from the partisan hysteria plaguing politics right now. Though it's true that cultures of hostility and violence appear to be a growing trend, from university heckling to citywide brawls, that still only accounts for a fraction of the millions of emotionally stable millennials who aren't ready to duke it out in the name of national socialism or democratic socialism. Golker offers a more practical and optimistic analysis. He believes that more millennials are likely to embrace free markets when they see them as fragile Hayek did, which is the view that markets are the only effective way to take all the billions of bits of information about what people have and want and allocate resources accordingly. The Austrian-born British economist is well known for his philosophical influence and perspective. One of his most famous works is The Road to Serfdom. In it, Hayek proclaims, quote, There is all the difference in the world between treating people equally and attempting to make them equal. And this makes sense. A fair system of egalitarian rules which secure peaceful cooperation and cohabitation of diverse people while respecting their individuality, free thought, and bodily autonomy sounds great. The socialist alternative strips us of that respect and forces the state to become everyone's provider with no choice or competition in finding better ways to solve problems. Markets are complex and extremely difficult to centrally plan, if not outright impossible. Currency manipulation, wealth redistribution, and corporate lobbying are par for course, and it's highly doubtful that Bernie Sanders is going to make any tangible progress in the direction of correcting the flaws of government. Yet, thanks to the market innovation of Bitcoin and blockchain technology, we have options to safeguard our wealth from the corrupt manipulation of the state. The market can also be credited with supplying extraordinary empowerment to ordinary people. Global supply chains have lifted billions out of extreme poverty, and phenomenons like the sharing economy decentralize markets that were previously cartelized by big corporations, such as the taxi industry or hotels. And even though our president can be a less than desirable voice for our civic values, the numbers reflecting America's voice tell a different story. Today, over 80% of millennials support a path to citizenship for immigrants. Opposition to LGBT 
LGBT marriages is less than 15% amongst ourselves and Gen Z. We're the most charitable generation in history, the most dedicated to ensuring fair and equal empowerment in the workplace. But this shouldn't necessarily suggest that the progressive politicians who are championing these issues are to thank for society's social advances. Nor should it be assumed that the improved conditions of today are the pure result of tax cuts for the rich and corporate outsourcing, as Gulker explains here. Why is that messaging being lost on millennials? We had a guest yesterday say that it's the fault of colleges, it's the fault of education, and that the millennials that watch their parents lose their homes in the, in the Great Recession just don't understand what capitalism even is and that it actually works in this country. Yeah, well, well, economic events and anxiety surrounding them are absolutely part of the issue, as are some far left politicians that may prey on that anxiety. At the same time, what I can do as somebody who supports free markets is think, how can I bring a positive message of capitalism to millennials who um, are ready and understand the need for bottom-up change. And that's what capitalism is. It's the ability of individuals to have ideas, cooperate with each other, see if those ideas work. That's how society changes, and that's mm -hmm. capitalism. Republicans and Conservatism Inc. organizations haven't given millennials much reason to believe they have our best economic interests at heart. Much like their Democratic colleagues in Washington, many organizations today who claim to be a voice for the people are detached from the reality 99% of us encounter. But the market, on the other hand, is something of our making. It's the product of cooperation, discovery, diversity, and entrepreneurialism. And capitalism, as properly defined by Goker as bottom-up change, has proven itself historically to be the greatest benefit to marginalized groups and makes us all richer in the process. Not only in the sense of hard-earned money in our pockets, which most any millennial will tell you is a hell of a lot more preferable than whatever government program of the day Congress is selling, but more importantly, it allows us to build a richer culture based around tolerance of goods, services, and ideas that satisfy our rapidly evolving demands for society through international commerce, freedom of speech, and a passion drive for a better tomorrow. Not via safe spaces or handouts from the same government structures responsible for the senseless wars, bank bailouts, brutality against minorities, and failing government programs. Ideally, we can do better than following the far left and hard right into yet another repeated era of the infallible American status quo.